Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the bullpen. The man bold enough to step into the bullpen today is none other than nationally recognized Republican strategist Ash Wright. Ash Wright's background includes senior political advisor to Commissioner George P. Bush, Deputy Director of Government Relations, Texas General Land Office, and political director of the Republican Party of Texas. Him and I actually have something in common. There was a time in my life, Mr. Wright, where I was the political director for the Georgia Democratic Party oh, some cool. time ago. So I understand Great. the party politics, which in a state can be quite quite chaotic, right? That's right, that's right, for sure. All right, so based on some of the commentary I've seen and some of the posts you have made, you are a big Second Amendment guy, okay? You are a guns guy. And I don't want to presume your point of view before we get into our discussion. So let me ask you, what do you feel or how do you feel the Second Amendment connects to the everyday American. Why is it so important to you? Sure. Yeah. I mean, look. To me, the Second Amendment is something that that I value, frankly, because because someone's trying to take it away from me. If that makes sense, right? So I am, like you said, I'm a big gun guy. I live in rural Texas. You know, I'm a hunter, fisherman. That's just kind of who I am. I, you know, I have lots of of guns, right? I don't own any, you know, any, you know, machine guns or, or military grade weapons, but but I am a big gun, and I like to fight for people's right to own those guns. Um, and, and frankly, I, it's just something that I feel like that Americans um, should have the right to own because someone's trying to take them away from us. So so if the government doesn't want me to own guns, then that tells me that we need to have the ability to own guns, if that makes sense. And so that's part of why I'm, I'm a big supporter of the Second Amendment and why, why I'm going to fight staunchly uh, for Americans' rights to continue that. Let me tell you why that doesn't make sense to me. Um, Every right comes with a level of responsibility. There was no, there is no right completely unchecked. Even former Justice Scalia talked about how these rights must carry common sense responsibility and restrictions. So let's talk about the freedom of speech. Well, you have the right to say what you want to say without the government limiting that right. But if you say things that infringe on my right to life and liberty, if you say, um, fire in a crowded building and there is no fire in that crowded building. Well, you can actually be charged with a crime. The government can say, no, 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 no. You cannot use your speech to create physical harm to other people. That's not considered speech control, correct? Yeah, correct. I mean, look, look, you're you're absolutely right, and I know you you, know, you didn't think you were going to hear that today, right? But I, I think <laughs> the premise of that is correct. But but at the same time, I think look, we already have that, right? Like sensible Americans that are owning guns are already abiding by the laws, the same laws that we abide by with free speech, like you're talking about. We don't go into buildings and yell fire. We also go down and get background checks when we buy guns. We get the same background checks whether it's at a gun show or whether you're buying them down at your local gun shop. I mean, we I don't carry my gun without a concealed carry license if it's you know against the law to carry on any premise or in states where they have stricter gun laws. And so we're already abiding by those same things, just like we are in the First Amendment. And so, but continuing to add to that like over and over and over, like right now with them trying to add you know 10 day waiting periods for background checks or ban these military grade you know weapons without any like actual formal description of what a military grade weapon is, is where I think the average American has a problem with this. And so, so you know, it's it's kind of in fact, we've been dealing with this as a country um, all the way back into the 90s. And that was part of the problem when Bill Clinton passed his ban on assault on assault weapons was that there was no real definition of what an assault weapon is. And that's essentially what we're going back through today. But that would kind of be my question back to you, which would be, I understand your premise of that, but then what is your take on and where do you think that line is drawn in the sand between my right to own a gun versus also my right to to own a gun in a law abiding manner? Let me put it to you this way. Um, our right to own a gun is not our right to own a bazooka. And you understand the point that I'm making. It's the carnage sure, of the weaponry uh, that is called into question. And if you wanna look at it technically, knives are considered arms as well. But we've had Supreme Court decisions to kind of split the hairs on what a weapon or what an arms is. But let me disagree with you on the sentiment that most Americans are actually on your side as it relates to this. Um, Pew Research did a poll, brother, 
And Pew Research conducted this poll and found that 60% of Americans say that gun laws should be tougher. That was up from 57% from last year and 52% from 2017. So as the years progress, more Americans are saying we now need tougher gun laws. Here's another stat and this is in your state of Texas. And Texas has now passed one of the most, um, in my opinion, insane gun laws I have ever seen. But let's talk about Texas, 81% of Texans, including 79% of gun owning households and 79% of Republicans support requiring a permit to carry a handgun in Texas. However, they just passed a law expressing the exact opposite or just presented a law expressing the exact opposite of the sentiment of their actual Texans. Here's another stat, 78% of Texans, including 78% of gun owning households and 73% of Republicans support requiring all gun buyers, even in a private gun deal, must submit to a criminal background check. So brother, you are out of touch with not only the sentiment of the country, but the sentiment of your own state. So how is it that Texas can get away with proposing a law that's contrary to the uh, to the expression of their political base and their citizens. Well, I haven't I haven't seen that exact poll, so I can't speak Pew directly research. to that to that number. And I'll look it up after we get over uh, after we get off. But you know, look, I, I I you know I've seen polling on the other side, and and part of the part of the reason well, why well, this brother, gun do me a favor. Let, let me say this: I want you to cite the polling on the other side that you've seen. I have seen internal campaign polling uh, that, that shows that uh, I, I'm not, I mean, I'm under NDAs and contracts. I'm not at liberty to say on air. Uh, oh, the top I, secret. It, oh, wait, 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 top secret polling. Well, I wouldn't call it top secret. Well, but, if you can't um, tell me but, where the polling but came from, the NRA who did the polling the NRA or what the polling put says. Out a lot of statistics and studies that say most Americans uh, most Texans and uh, I believe most Americans who own guns do not support a right to have to go through more background checks. I mean, we already have criminal background checks for every single person that buys a gun. When every time I go down and buy a per- and purchase a firearm, I go through a criminal background check. Um, every time, if I want to apply for a CHL or a concealed handgun license, I go through a criminal background check. I mean, the, these laws aren't. I mean, it, it, we is what we do as a country is we kind of we we mush the data. And we kind of make it sound like some individual can just wake up tomorrow morning and go well, down and buy in, in some cases, gun. sir. That's just not simply sir, the case. In all, in all due respect, CNN just did a story where they followed a teenager to a gun show in one of the states that had the gun show loophole, where a background check and a and an ID was not required to purchase from a gun show through a private dealer. That is a problem because it sounds like you're saying that you go through the background checks and I assume that you would be okay if that if that was a uniform national law. Would you be okay with that? Yeah, absolutely. I, I already do that every day. If, if, if Look, I agree, we need background checks. We need to be able to know people's mental health. Um, we need to, you know, if you are been in federal prison, if you are, you know, create committing other crimes. I mean, we do need to know that for gun owners. I'm not arguing that point. What I'm arguing is that we already do that. Now there may be some. No, some not few, everyone. Not everyone. Okay, that's what I'm saying. There may be right. a few instances where we don't do that, and those people should be held accountable for that. But but increasing it throughout, like increasing regulation on me on the law-abiding citizen, isn't going to ever prevent a hundred percent of people going down and breaking the law and selling firearms illegally. And that that's to my point is that we're well, regulating the people that are already following the regulations. Okay, let me ask you this because I got to get to it. I don't want to get bogged down at one point. Um, are you in agreement with the Texas legislation, which says you do not have to possess a permit to carry a gun? Are you for that legislation or against it? Correct. I mean, look, I, yeah, look, yes, because when you go down and purchase a firearm, you're already going through the checks that say you're allowed to own this firearm. So there shouldn't have to be an additional. 
um, an additional permit to to carry this. Now, I, I I don't personally carry a gun on me. It's not a law that I'm going to take uh, that I'm going to to take a you know use of. But I do think that we should have the right to do that, and I think that makes our citizens safer. Um, it, it allows them to protect themselves, and that's something that we need, frankly, across the whole country. So let me ask you this question because I I find it quite ironic, brother, that you will say you're okay with Texas having this proposed legislation to where a citizen in Texas does not need a permit to carry a gun. Uh, Let me ask you this, uh, do you think you need a license to drive a car? Yes. Do you think you need a license to get married? Uh, It's called a marriage license. I mean, I yes, I mean, there is a marriage license, but I think a marriage is ordained by God, not by the state. So I guess, you know, technically, I guess I would say, I don't believe you have to have a marriage license. Really but I do say, but look, the, the difference in, in, but look, here's the difference, right? I do mm-hmm. think you need a license to drive a car, right? I need to go through a background check to drive a gun or to buy a gun. The difference is, though, is that we don't, we don't ban cars or we don't, we don't strengthen and go through more regulation for 16 year olds to drive cars, even but though that's, that's you know, actually a equal not true. number of people drive from like drunk driving or die from drunk driving, et cetera. No, I mean, that's not true. What well, you're guns saying is are not, not true. guns don't kill people. People kill people. Okay, cars don't drive there drunk. People drive drunk. Okay, that make so sense? so no, it doesn't make sense. Number one, there are restrictions on how 16 year olds can use a car. In most states, 16 year olds cannot have full driving access without having an adult driver in the vehicle. So you're wrong on that. 16 year olds are restricted and regulated. Number two, manufacturers of cars are restricted on the kind of car they can actually uh, promote for sale. There are certain cars that if they don't have a certain preset speed limit, and if they have uh, particular uh, elements added to the car, they are no longer street ready. They cannot be driven as a regular car. So there are common sense restrictions for cars. There are common, there sense, are common restrictions sense restrictions for, for guns as well, miles. right? Like I can't go down to my local gun shop and buy and buy a machine gun today. I don't. I would have to have a. But you I can make one. A license of federal. You can make. Gun. But think about this. You can make a machine gun. Why is that not regulated? Why why can't we just say, listen, if you can't buy it, right? Let's make it illegal to make one. Let's not allow that loophole to stand. Well, it's illegal to own one without the the proper licensing. So even if you build it, it doesn't negate the fact that you have to register it. You have to register it with the ATF. But still, right. think so, about the common sense, brother. I think you're a smart guy. So let me let me go back to the to the foundation principle that I'm trying to make here. If it's illegal to buy it and it's illegal to own it, why is it not illegal to make it and then illegal to own it? Think about it this way. If it's illegal to have narcotics and it's illegal to use narcotics, why would it all of a sudden become legal if you made the narcotic yourself? Well, but the, look, I get what you're saying. I, I think we're coming to the same point, which is, which is, we don't need to regulate. I mean, there you can't go out and just purchase, for example, bump stocks or a lot of things that it takes to build these guns. I mean, you make it sound like anyone can just drive down to the local gun store and buy enough guns to create a machine gun, and that's really, frankly, just not the truth. And, and so it, it already is illegal and regulated ex- extremely throughout the process. And once you build it, it's illegal to own it without having it regulated. So I mean, it's we're it's like we're just tacking on laws that to enforce laws that we already have. And if the individual is going to build a gun and not go down and license it, they're going to do that whether we, we make it illegal to buy the gun or not. Yeah, but and you so- can't make that as your argument because if you say, well, Let's not pass a common sense law because individuals will still break the law. That means you need to get rid of all of all of your laws. Get rid of murder, get rid of assault, get, get rid of aggravated assault, get rid of all of it because there are people that will still violate the law even with laws on the books. That's 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 the sense that you're making when you say things well, like, no, well, because, people are still going to violate the law. Where we disagree is that it's a common sense law because a common sense law would regulate something that isn't done by the average. The average citizen can't do this anyways. And so it's not common sense because we can't, it, it doesn't make any possible sense since the average citizen cannot go down and build their own machine gun without licenses to buy parts to those mm-hmm. guns. No, I mean, this sir. isn't. Look, that argument doesn't work you can, here. You can go down and buy semi and build semi no, automatic brother. guns, but you do you have to be licensed to buy certain Let me tell you something, man. Guns. Let me tell you something, brother. Laws are not actually made based on what the average citizen will do. Let's start there. 
because the average citizen will never commit murder. But that doesn't mean we do not have murder laws on the books. So you're right, the average citizen will not make a machine gun. But that is not the prerequisite for a law on the books. It never has been, and it should not be in this context. Do you not agree? I mean, I agree with I agree with the sentiment that you're saying, but I don't think that that should apply to to gun law to just creating more and more gun laws, which in in turn makes it harder for individuals that are law abiding citizens to own guns. I mean, you're is what we're doing is we is we create bills where we say, okay, well, it's it's neg you cannot build a gun, but then we tack on, well, you also can't own a military grade weapon, but we don't define what military grade weapon means. Well, how do so, you define it? I would say that a military grade weapon is a weapon that can create mass destruction mm -hmm. and is and is automatic. But that also doesn't mean that the average citizen shouldn't be able to own a semi-automatic. For example, my shotgun is a semi-automatic, which how many, is not- How many bullets does it shoot, brother? It shoot, It takes three rounds at a time. Okay, and it at three rounds at a, time, at a time. And then um, I have to reload to get- Gotcha, that, and what sorry, do you what use that gun for? Hunting. Dog now, hunting. Let, let me just say this, man. I'm not a hunter. But, brother, if you got to have a gun like that to shoot something, you may be in the wrong hobby. It takes that many bullets to shoot something? A bird, yes, it does. <laughs> you should come to Texas and, and hunt with me sometime. Well, I'll let show me tell you, you something. Ain't no way in the hell I'm coming to Texas with you and a gun, brother. That's just not going <laughs> to happen. I promise you that. That's the I, last I, thing I, I want to do in my I, life. I live in a very safe community and we all own guns. <laughs> That's what that last Karen said too, a very safe community, right? <laughs> um, let me uh, move to this question about um, arming for the government, right? Because the original context of the Constitution said this is a well regulated militia, right? An armed militia for the sake of taking arms against the United States government. We recently had a statement that came from Laura Trump. And I want you to answer this question for me. Laura Trump said on Fox News a couple of days ago that individuals on the border should basically take matters into their own hands. They need to grab their guns, take matters into their own hands. Now, I want to remind you, undocumented workers aren't coming to America to kill Americans at the border. They're trying to avoid Americans. They're trying to get into the country. But for Lord Trump to say something like this on a major cable news station, that American citizens may need to grab their guns and take matters into their own hands because she may disagree with the immigration policy. Don't you think that's just going too far? Uh, yeah, I mean, look, honestly, yeah, it is going too far. I, I, I go down to the border in South Texas all the time. Frankly, those are great communities. They're very safe. There is no need for anyone to take up arms in South Texas. There's no need for anyone to take up arms in El Paso or frankly, anywhere along the Texas border. I believe that's the exact same case in Arizona and California. So yeah, I think, look, that that is that is probably, I don't I didn't hear the comments, but it sounds like it's pandering. Um, and, and that's really, frankly, that's part of what is wrong with the gun debate is we need to get back to, in your words, common sense and talk about this. And 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 um, you know, uh, I'm trying to think of the word. I'm drawing a blank on the word, but you know, using South Texas or the border in Texas to justify taking up arms, frankly, just isn't right. And frankly, it does the injustice of those communities. Um, it does an injustice for those communities because those communities are just as safe as I am here in Abilene, Texas, or, or mm. anywhere else in the state yeah. of Texas, frankly. Man. And 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 in, and in most cases, safer. And and Ash, that's what I need you to do, brother. The way you just articulated the reality that statements like that simply pander rather than promote a common sense solution or negotiation. You have to call out those on the right. You are in a position as a leader in the Republican Party to call out the rhetoric that's on the right. And believe me, I, I get it, I know it's not easy. I call out rhetoric on the right and the left. I'm okay with giving it to them both ways, right? You have to be one of those individuals because what you've said on my show, even though I disagree with most of it, I actually agree with some of it. That's a start. That is a start. That's right. So absolutely. I, I highly encourage you, man. Um, hold them accountable to the ridiculousness. Make sure that you say uh, what you want to say to them, just like you've said on this program. Don't pander yourself, brother. Ash, I appreciate you being. Thanks on for having me on. I appreciate it. It was a great talk. Thank you.